Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs template, or actually five. So this is the dumpling, and this is the dumpling template, our no-slip material on the back. Sometimes it's going to be tan, sometimes it's going to be gray. It's the same stuff, no slipping, no kidding. If you made the dumpling before or you've seen them, they call it a clamshell, sometimes it's a pouch, a taco pouch, sometimes it's a persimmon, sometimes, I wrote it down, half moon they call it. So it's called a bunch of different things things but basically it's just a big zipper pouch that opens way up so you can with the clamshell put a whole bunch of stuff in there put a cute handle on it if you make it cross body you can do a strap across there's lots of different ways that you can make this but mainly I want you to make it easily and nicely nicely is the hard part for most of the time when you do one of these things so you print out from the internet this paper template and when you go to trace it or you go to cut it, you're not gonna get the same thing. So maybe you say, hey, let me make one of these acrylic templates in that shape and what does it do? It slides on you. So the no slip material, for those of you that know me, no slipping, no kidding, this stuff, you can see how that grabs. All right, so I've got here interfacing. Let's talk about the sizes, let's talk about the materials and then we'll get to cutting and then I'll walk you through the steps. Okay, so I have a five, a six, a seven, an eight, and a 10. Now these are not five inches, six inches, etc. What this is, and thank you Linda Olson for making all these samples and suggesting I make the little guy. I didn't want to do a little guy because I thought it would be too intimidating. It's actually easier to make the larger one, but the little ones are pretty easy too with the template. So Linda Olson had sent these guys to me. I've got one, two, three, a couple others that she sent. Isn't this adorable? So this, turned into this. And what this lets you do with all of these is make these the five. And again, it's not five inches, it's not five inches, basically from here up mainly, where that fold would be, and it's the fold of the fabric. We don't have to seam, have a seam allowance down there. We're basically looking at that measurement. So don't get caught up in the five inches, six inches, etc. Just think, do you like the little guy? There's the five. I've gotten it's a, oh, it didn't fall. There's the six. There's the seven, uh, seven and the eight and the 10. All right. So Basically, you're thinking, hey, what size works well? Are you going to put a whole lot of stuff in? Are you going to put a little bit of stuff? Let me just show you the 10 inch. I love the 10 inch for taking in a suitcase. Look how big that is. That's going to carry all kinds of goodies. And again, your makeup, your whatever it is, toiletries, look how much it's going to hold and it'll zip right up. Okay, so we've got the sizes. What are our materials that we need? Well, the template, of course, you need a rotary cutter. I like Martelli's rotary cutter. I'm a lefty. So if you know about our rotary cutter this works well but you can use other rotary cutters as well we have gone in and put in the template these cut marks those cut marks there allow me to cut in and cut in if you cut with a template right to let me show you this so you can see them if you cut with a template that's just straight you're not going to cut but to right about here and right about there. So you're not going to get those cuts that are going to get you right in and give you a perfect cut. So those are our cut marks. Those are one of the things that we specialize in and it really makes it a whole lot easier. That gives us our nice boxed bottom there. All right, so you need a rotary cutter and then we want to have the template itself. Interfacing, you can use SF-101. SF-101, that's what I have here. It's a woven fusible. You can see I've ironed this on and it works really well, but I really want something more. I'm gonna show you here where it's not ironed on completely. I want you to be able to see. It's got that bumpy on the back. I like using this in combination. So I'll show you a couple combination options. So SF-101, and again, you can see I haven't fused there, but down here I've fused and it's readily available wherever you want. And this is SF-101, you can see it there. All right, so this is a fusible fleece. A fusible fleece, there's a couple different widths that fusible fleece comes in. This is a little bit heavier. They do make a thinner fusible fleece that I really, really like as well. And that fusible fleece is gonna give you a little bit of stability. But what I really like 
is the foam. Now there's foam that's bosal foam, they're soft and stable, there's a bunch of different foams. What I want is a single side fusible. This side here is the fusible. You can see it's kind of bumpy compared to the smooth side. When you're doing a smaller one, you may or may not want to use the fusible foam. I like it. To me, this just gives you a little bit more stability. I love the lemon here, but it's a little wobbly. You can see it's a little bit wobbly. Let me go to this one and you can see how much stiffer that is. Let me pop this one over and open and you can see how much stiffer it is. I like stiffer. I think that's going to be better. You can see here how much stiffer that is, how much more substantial it is compared to this one. See how it's floppy? So what is your use? What is your purpose with this? And then you'll decide. And again, I like to do one and another. So SF-101 on one of mine here, and then a fusible foam on the other. Now, when you're pressing with the fusible foam, what you'll want to do is lay your fabric on top here and just kind of put it in place and then flip it over. So, oh, no, actually, just how I had it. Now, we're not going to iron on our mat. Of course, we never iron on a cutting mat. You're going to be ironed on a pressing table somewhere. But this side that's fusible, your fabric would go right on top. Imagine this is just plain fabric, and you would be able to press right there. This takes that heat. It's going to take a lot of that heat to get that to really fuse. A lot of times you'll think that fusible foam isn't working and it's because you've been pressing from the back side. That's a lot of space for that heat to go all the way through to get that glue to activate. So turn it this way and press here. And if you've worked with fusible foam, then you know that. All right, the last one that I don't really love is batting. Why don't I love batting? Because it's wobbly. It's floppy. This is 100% cotton batting. This has no scrim. This is perfect for the microwave. Well, we don't need that here. So you can buy a batting that has a fusible on one side. That gives it a little bit more stability. But the idea is use what you have. I don't want you to go out and buy a whole lot of stuff first. Just play with what it is that you have and then go from there. But my goal is to get you to try fusible foam. Again, Bozel makes it. There's a bunch of Pellon makes it uh, soft and stable by Annie's. There's a bunch of different options for you. So I'm going to get all of this stuff out of the way and I'm going to come back here and we're going to talk about the additional materials. This guy right here, this is the five that I have and you can see I've done the foam here and I have no interfacing on here. So we're going to put that SF-101 on this. That's what I've done. And then I'm going to cut that out so you can see how this plus this would work together. We need a zipper. When we use our zipper, let's find my zipper. We need a zipper that's a little bit longer than, not the diameter really, but if we look at here, you know, we can look to see as I'm laying that out, it's kind of hard to see with that color, but let's see if we can see that right there basically coming around here, coming around here, you get the idea that it's past here and past here. I'd even go for a longer zip or a little bit longer if you have one available because you don't want to be fighting this part of the zipper and this part of the zipper. It never hurts to have more zipper than you think you actually need. So when we're looking at that, let's turn it this way. We're going to be basically sewing the zipper on one side first. And I like to start in the middle. We'll look at that in a minute. And then we're going to be bringing this over and sewing it to the other side. So having that zipper on and having that extra zipper space makes a big difference. All right, so let's look at what other materials we need. I like to have some kind of a strap if you want to do a strap you can. This one is sewn right in, but you can also make a strap with a little tab here. This one I pulled off of another purse that I had, but these guys are readily available. This is one of your keychain kind of things, so you can put your keys on there as well. And this would be overkill, but this could go right inside here. You could put it right inside here. So you choose where it is that you wanted to go. If it was inside here, imagine a bigger one. This would be sticking out, and look how cool that would be to have that strap attached to that. That would be inside, so we wouldn't be seeing it. Plan ahead when you're thinking about a strap if you want that. So you can see no strap here. I've got a strap over here. I love this. Make it sweet. Life is short. Make it sweet. I have this ribbon. If you like that and you want to buy some of that, let me know and I'll put it on my website. Same thing with this. Be beautiful. Be beautiful with the bees. So we've got the bees there. So there's some really cute ribbons that are out there. You can also add 
all kinds of doodads. So imagine you're giving this as a gift. You can put right inside, stitched with love. All right, right inside of there, you're gonna do this before, not after you've completed this. You can add the ribbon here as the tag itself. You can find all of these things. There's a whole bunch of different ones here. What did I do? This, all of this stuff, plus a few more ribbons that I don't have here, they all come in my kit. I've got a handmade tag kit that includes all of these. Look how many there are. Imagine having those, the little wooden ones on your bag. You can go to the website, winterdesigns.com, and you'll get to see pictures of all of these. But all of these would look really great on the outside. Imagine right here, handmade, on the outside or you can have it inside too. So you just decide. You can even have your own labels made if you wanted to do that. All right, so you need some pins, you need some clips, you need some glue, whatever it is you want to do. I'm gonna tell you if you're new to zippers, don't pin because a pin is going to distort the zipper a little bit. So what do I recommend? I can't find my glue that's the sewing glue, but I love it. But Elmer's glue works just fine too. In this over here, all of this pile that I have over here, this is part of a kit that I call a, a Keep It Together. I think it's called Keep It Together or Get It Together. I'll have to look and see what the name is and I'll post in the link down below. All of these things, these are those clips. I've got this wash away tape. I love this stuff. This is really, really good to use. You can buy this wherever, but I've included all of these goodies as part of a hold it together. It's called hold it together, I think. The hold it together kit. So all of these things, this Elmer's glue, you pour a little bit in here, and this has a fine tip nozzle on that, which means you can do perfect mitered corners just so. This can go right along the edge of the zipper. With the zipper, I just use this nozzle. You can also use all of these. These become kind of, this becomes kind of messy. This is a little bit easier to work with, but all of these clips, all of these pins, all of these options. If we weren't going to sew, then the Sela fusible tape here, this stuff is not for sewing, but it really comes in handy. So all of this stuff that you see over there is part of my hold it together kit. I'm gonna get all that stuff out of the way. There's even a glue gun in there. So that's a nice option for you to think about as well. All right, let's move the rest of this stuff. So I said rotary cutter, our fusible, um, whatever interfacing you're gonna be doing, some sharp scissors. We wanna get some sharp scissors because we're going to be snipping, snipping, snipping. When we are doing our zipper, that's going to be a big deal. All right, so let's look at how we cut with the template. So back here, remember we had the paper template. We don't want to use this. If you've used one of these before, you probably traced or tried with your rotary cutter to go around. And what happens is this gets destroyed. You got to print another one. Or when you move it over here or fold it in half, you're not going to get exactly the same thing. So I'm going to put that away. I'm going to come over to my six. And do you see I've got enough fabric here. Right here I have that cut and that's where I haven't fused it together. So we're going to fold over here. And what's cool about the style that I'm going to teach you is you do not need for the lining or the outer fabric to have a seam here. Now you can if you want to, and you can certainly do what we've done here. By the way, Lisa made these samples for me and she did such an amazing job. I love these. She was the first one to test out the dumpling after me, the templates, and I just love the combination of these two. So if you're gonna do something like that, then yes, we're gonna have, if you look right here, here, where that boxed bottom is here, basically about here is where you would have that seam with the fabric. So you can look to see. This is the next size up that we have here, but it's a great way to do it. But again, you do not need, especially for your first one, you do not need to add any seam allowance. What we're going to do is line this up. I'm going to turn it this way so you all can see. We're going to line that fold up with the bottom of the template. If you look to see right here, I've got barely enough fabric. Now I'm okay with that because the template is not going to move. You could give yourself maybe a, an eighth of an inch or whatever. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get this in position so I can cut. We're gonna cut 
into that cut mark. We're going to cut around and this is going to be the outside fabric or the lining fabric. You decide what it is you want. All right, so my rotary cutter is open. I'm looking down here to make sure this is lined up with the fold because this is a boxed corner and that's a boxed corner. Now my hands go here, not here. Why? Because I'm going to be cutting this way. If I hit the template, I do not want to slice my fingers. That's not a good thing. So I'm going to hold this here and I'm going to go inside. I don't know if you can see, but right inside there, I'm in that cut mark, right inside of there. When I turn the template, I'm going to pull that out. And you see, I have to kind of pull back. And then I'm going to go around here and I'm going to cut off. What have I done? I basically just left that here. I'm going to come back and do that in a minute. Now I'm a lefty. So what I'm doing here, basically for all of you right-handers, welcome to our world. You get to see what it's like for doing something the opposite direction. Notice right here, I'm barely on that fabric and I may actually be on the other side where I've got a little bit of that white. No big deal, because that's part of my seam allowance. Okay, we're ready to do this corner. So my hand again is here, not over here. The no slip material is grabbing, so I don't need to get my finger right inside. I went into that cut. I'm going to pull back and I'm going to come over here. Right inside of here, I'm going to now hold and I'm going to cut right inside. What that'll let me do is cut that perfect corner. Can you see how gorgeous that is? This is the easiest, the most accurate, the most consistent way to do a beautiful mitered corner. Can you see right there? I'm not right along that edge. I'm going to turn this a little bit. Hopefully y'all can see that little bit of fabric right there. Can you see that? Yeah, there, you can see it. So what I want to do is go right along that edge. And basically, I just wanted to make sure I was hugging the template. These templates, this material here, that no slip material that's on the back side, between the two, it's going to give me a perfect cut every single time. All right, let me get rid of all my fabrics here, all those scraps. And I'm going to open this up and show you all what I have. Okay, so right here, there's that white that I was talking about. That's part of the seam allowance, so no big deal. Oh, and guess what I did? I said I was going to do this size, but I had prepped it for the other. So you can see how these two don't match, but that's okay. All right, what would we do? Imagine this with the foam was this size, and we would be lining up. Let's go over here. So we're going to take these two. So what do we need to do? We're going to first add our zipper. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to pull out one of my steps. Do y'all remember Nancy's notions? Nancy Zeman talked about doing steps, the step outs, and that's basically what we have here. So we've got the first step out. Okay, so you can choose to have an interfacing or not. What I've got here is my fusible foam and then no interfacing here. This is my lining and this is my outer fabrics. So I'm going to put this aside for now and let's take a look at the zipper. So I want to fold my zipper where my zipper pull and this bottom part of my zipper are together. We're basically going to be using those two as my guide. And this zipper is much larger than this project, so I'm going to basically hold this down tight, and I'm going to grab my scissors, and I'll go in and snip. Now, I've snipped one side ahead of time, but I want to show you how I did it for one side. So we're taking a snip there. Now, what we want to do is zipper pull down. So we're going to do zipper pull down. We're going to find that center snip right there, and I'm going to line that up. We're going to snip here. So how did we get this? We can use the template and find the center of it, or we can just fold that in half and squish that down. And do you see that cut that I made right there? We would take our scissors and just go in and snip right there. We basically want to have the center here, the center here marked so we can line that up. Okay. So zipper pull down, we're going to go to this, and we're going to line those up. So there's my little snip. We're going to do this here. So again, you can use clips, you can use pins. Pins to me distort, so I'm not crazy about pins. You can, based on your comfort, use the zipper tape. You can use glue. You decide what it is you want. I'm going to clip here. And what I want to do, do you see how this right here is kind of fighting with me? So what I want to do is clip, clip, clip. And I'm basically, you can see I've already done it on the one side, so I don't have to repeat that process. I'm going to clip along the way. And those clips that I have here, we're just going to take whatever sharp, smaller scissors you have, and we're just going to go in and snip. Now, we're going to be using whatever foot. You can use a zipper foot if you want to, but you don't have to. We need a quarter inch seam allowance for this. So we're going to be okay with that when I'm clipping in here. I'm not clipping down. 
really deep, what I'm doing is giving myself enough room that when I attach this, that it's gonna follow that curve. You'll know if you're comfortable with zippers or not. If you've done zippers before, then do it whatever way that works for you. Remember, the idea of this is nothing new. What is new, because there's tons of videos out there on persimmon, on dumpling, on all that, what is new is the no-slip material, those cut marks that give me the boxed bottom so that everything lines up perfectly easily quickly. This cutting is the difference. Everything else that you do can be whatever way you want to do. You may have made these before. What you'll find is the template's going to make the whole process so much easier, so much better. Better meaning more accurate, more consistent. They're just going to look better. They're going to look more professional. Okay, so we're basically going right to here and I'm going to add maybe one more. So can you see how much bigger my zipper is here? This is a much bigger zipper and we would continue on on this side too. So once we've done that, then let's look at what's going to happen. We're going to stitch that down. I'm going to pull this over because we're not doing this yet. This guy here is the lining. What we need to do once we've stitched this is we're going to be stitching this to this. What do we do here? We're folding that center and finding that center cut and lining those up too. Okay, so we'll stitch along here with whatever foot it is that you like to use. You can use the zipper foot if you want. It gives you that guide, but you don't have to use the zipper foot. Okay, so we're going to do that. We stitch that down. Remember, we pin, pin, pin after we clip, clip, or clip, 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 and snip, snip, snip as you go. Then once we've done that, we're going to bring this over and do that. Let's take a look at that step here. So we've got that step out. And if you all remember Nancy Zeman, Nancy's Notions, that's basically the step out that we have. So we can see here, there's the zipper, and you can see that zipper pull is down. And this is the right side of our fabric. This is the outside. This here, you can see, this we've gone ahead and cut that apart. Why? Because those are going to be coming together on the other side. Let me show you here right inside that's a hard one to see let me get a lighter one maybe you all can see here can you see how those are going to go in those are going to go inside the seam so they're going to be coming apart anyway so we're going to cut that apart and you can use whatever it is to just cut those apart if you want and what are we going to do so we've stitched the one side and then once we did that and i'm going to pull up the one i dropped on the floor we're going to pull this over and we're going to basically be clipping and clipping and clipping. So we're going to be clipping, 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 clipping. This would all be sewn and we would clip these down and we would stitch that down. This right here is what we have here. Let me zip this up so you all can see what I mean. And let's get that zipper going. Okay, I think that'll give you a better idea. So do you see how that is basically what we had here? Okay, so we want now to add the lining. And what we're going to do is unzip this and we're going to take our lining and again you can use an interfacing if you want to, you don't have to. And we're going to clip, clip, clip and you can choose to clip that zipper. This one's not clipped, it's up to you. I like clipping, I just think it makes it a little bit easier. If you want to clip that center again you can do that as well. And we would clip, clip, clip here and all the way around. Clip, clip, clip here and all the way around. And then we're going to sew that down. This guy here will give me my lining. And let's take a look at what that gives us. All right, so here it is. This is the outside piece. This is the lining. And what are we going to do? We're going to flip that right sides out. Now, you can, if you have not clipped, if you didn't clip before, you can and you should go in and clip, clip, clip. I find that if you clip the zipper, if you clip everything ahead of time, just like I did here, then see how that is all clipped right there? All those clips are going to help me out in this process. So right here, see those clips, those clips, all those clips. We can even go on those clips a little bit deeper here. That's going to help us when we turn this right sides out. Okay, so we're going inside. Now you'll want to grab an iron and you can use cork, you can use vinyl, you can use laminated fabric. If you do any of that, do not use your iron because that fabric does not work well. If you are using any of those and you do want to press a little bit, heat up. Let's pull over this. 
Let's say I have some laminated fabric, PUL, any of that stuff, press with your iron on top of here. And then when you've got this turned out, imagine this is the laminated side, then I can just kind of press here. That heat will help get any wrinkles or any crinkles or any of that out. So don't press a laminated fabric, an oil cloth, a cork, any of those fabrics because it's just not going to work well. It's not going to end up good. All right, but you can see right now, I need to give this a good press. Can you see how that's wanting to bow out because of that zipper? So what are we going to do? We would go in and press and press and press and press and press and press and pull and finagle. Finagle this so it starts looking good. Now you can top stitch or not top stitch, totally up to you. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is top stitched. Top stitching again, you can use a zipper foot if you want to, but you don't have to. All right, what do we want to do? We want to box our corners. So there's a bunch of different ways to box your corners, and let me open some of these up and show you. Serger. You can finish off with the serger, and it, it's not finished, and I'm okay with that. So you can see this one not a surged edge. Can you see how nice that looks? I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. That's making seam tape out of here. I'll show you the seam binding, and I like seam binding as a method. This one, on the 10 inch, it's fine to do this. Do you see right here? This is a finished edge right here, and that looks gorgeous, but this is also a seam here. So when you're cutting this, the lining was cut. Instead of placing the lining on the fold, you're going to have a raw edge on both of these. And then that allows you to get inside and finish that off. I don't do that on the smaller ones just because it's too much work, and especially with the foam. But boy, does that look nice inside, doesn't it? So the larger ones, it's a whole lot easier to do. And it's the same way you would finish off any other bag. My storage pods, it's a great way to finish off those as well. So it's that same process inside of here. This is when I talked about that vinyl material. We're not going to press that. That, but you can see it still looks great because you can heat up again that mat. And here's another surged edge inside of there. Let me grab another. Let's see what we have inside of this one. And there's another surged edge you can see, which is our favorite. Here is this guy here. And this was, done. oh, there, we already did that one. I flipped that one inside out. I forgot I showed you that one. Let's take a look at this one. And there is, again, a surged edge. If you don't have a serger, then you can do a zigzag. A zigzag stitch works just fine. Okay, so we're going to go to the inside. So I want to show you this. We're going to basically be folding in half. You can zip your zipper part of the way, but not all of the way when we do the second side. The first side, it doesn't matter. See how that lines up for me? This is not ready to go. This, what I need to do is pop this out. And what's great, again, about the templates is what you have from the bottom, this corner, this corner, those corners are going to be exactly the same because you've got the boxed bottom. What do we want to do? You can, if you want, right down here, take a snip or use a Sharpie or a pencil or a pen or a marking pen and put a mark right there because that is going to line up with the center of the zipper. But guess what? You don't need to because your corners are, are already going to line up because the template is giving you that. So what would we do? We can clip, clip, clip or pin, pin, pin. I want to bring this out flat because it does want to bow a little bit and we would go in and clip and we would clip. Now you can trim off the zipper if you want to, totally up to you. So the clip's there, and then this side over here, what are we gonna do? We're gonna leave this side unzipped because I need to get inside to be able to turn that. But do you see how that's already wanting to kind of go in the same position as this? So what are we gonna do? We've got the zipper edges that are not lined up because we unzipped it and we uncut it. We cut it, not uncut it, but we cut it. And we wanna find the center. This is where it matters, where you would wanna go in and mark right in here, this area here, so you know where to line that up and it's going to be right to the middle of the zippers. So we're going to bring this and line that up and can you see already that's not lined up so I want to line those up. 
So we're going to finagle this a little bit. And the foam does make it a little bit more difficult to work with. But to me, the foam is so worth it. OK, can you see what we're doing, basically? We've got this one lined up here. I'll place a clip there. And then we're going to clip the other side. And then we can go to the sewing machine. Now, you can go to the sewing machine. You can go to the serger. Again, it's up to you. We're going to line that up. Your zipper teeth should line up. OK, so let's take a look at what that looks like. So we would stitch across. We would stitch across. What's our seam allowance? Quarter inch, just like we did for the zipper. All right, let's get that one out of the way. Let's take a look here. And that's basically one side that's done. So there, that's stitched across. That's stitched across. And then over here, that's that other side. I like to go ahead and clip both sides. So when I get to the sewing machine, everything is ready to go. When you stitch both sides down, this is what you get. This is what you get. We're going to not flip it out, but let's flip it out. Because we want to check our work and make sure that those corners were pretty. Because of the template and that no slip material and those cut marks that are in there, those guys there, what I'm going to get here is exactly the same. I see so many videos where they're saying, get out your measurement tape and measure. I don't need to. The template is going to give me that because that's the beauty of the no slip and those cut marks. So this is going to match up. So we can start to see what this is going to look like. So we can see how, how good that's going to look. So we have to decide what do we want to do with the inside. So again, serger or a zigzag at the sewing machine. You can use pinking shears too if you want to. I'm going to grab this little guy and I want to show you what I like to do. And smaller, bigger, it doesn't really matter. I just think it's a nice look. So you can see here we could do a serge edge. What I've done though is I've cut some binding tape. You can make your own. This one, Linda grabbed from her fabric and cut strips. And my guess is it was a two and a half. Nope, maybe not. Let's see. I'm going to pull this right here. If I can get that to flop down. And it looks like it's just shy of well, probably one and one and three quarters, maybe somewhere around there. So totally up to you. I like to buy seam binding tape when I find it on sale. We're going to fold this down and we're going to fold this over. And if you want to use that glue again, I'm a big believer of the glue and the tape. So it's up to you. We're going to place this here. And that's going to go right inside here. And if I can get that inside. And I would stitch this down first or glue that down first. So you're not fighting with it like I am here. And this is going to go right inside there. And then a stiletto or something to hold that in place. And then you can clip that. And you're welcome to have a little bit hanging over. It doesn't really matter. All right, so we've got the one side. What are we going to do over here? We're going to trim off that excess because I don't need all of that. Cut yourself a longer piece. And we're going to fold that in. And you can see here, I even cut a little bit more than I need. So we're going to, again, fold this back and glue or tape or whatever it is or just finagle with your fingers. And again, a stiletto to push that corner underneath. And then we would go to the sewing machine. And we would put our needle down, scoot that over a little bit, put your needle down and you're going to stitch that down a couple times. Stitch down here if you want to, stitch down there. And what that's going to give you is a nice finished look. And that's what you're going to get. And then you'll repeat the process on the other side. So you have easier ways to finish these off. You do not have to do the seam binding. You do not have to do, you know, that the traditional way where we don't have any raw edges at all. Are you making these to sell? Are you making these as gifts? Or are you just making a bunch for your stuff to have in the car, to put your snacks in, to put whatever in? You know, if there's toothpaste and all kinds of stuff in here, you know, laminate the fabric or use PUL or something like that. But maybe it doesn't matter so much. But if you're going to make these to sell these, then that seam binding method to me, it's just a good way to finish it. But it's still faster, easier, I think. And I think it looks professional enough. Okay, guys, so I hope that gave you enough information about how to make these dumplings. So originally when I came out with the dumplings, I had the 6, the 7, the 8, and the 10. But we have now added the 5 in. Uh, five. So if you want the 5, 
that will be on my website soon, so you can look for that. I offer them individually. I offer them as a bundle. The bundle is always going to be a better deal. It gives you all the sizes, and they nest really well, so that's a great thing, too. You know, remember, you can add your tabs, add your handmade, add your little doodads, add one of these guys. You know, again, if we wanted to put this inside when we're making that, you know, putting the two layers, we've already sewn the zipper on one, and we're ready to put the zipper on the lining, this would go inside side of there. I mean, look how cool that would be. That can come right down here as well. So you decide where you want it to be. It could even be where we're attaching it somewhere here. You know, do instead of the raw edge, do a nice finished edge there so that you can have this as a strap. Make it a crossbody. You know, there's so many cool things you can do with this. I think the dumpling is such a fun project to do and the template makes it so easy. You can find these at winterdesigns.com and just look for the word dumpling and you'll see all the options that I have there. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to walk you through whatever you need and uh, hopefully this gave you enough to get started and go make a bunch and sell them give them away have fun dumplings for everybody thanks guys